You're listening to the Mind Your Autistic Brain podcast, the show for late identified autistics. Each week, you will hear the autism journey of another late identified person, including their hardest part, their best part, and insights they share just for you. So you know you are not alone on this journey, my friend. Find your person and community here each week. And don't miss the special editions of Creator Spotlight and Hot Topic with your hostess with the mostest, Social Audi. That's me, Carol Jean. Let's get started. Welcome to Mind Your Autistic Brain, the talk show for late identified autistics. This is our special edition of Creator Spotlight, and I am beyond excited to introduce you to my Creator Spotlight guest today, Kenny Davis of Painting on the Spectrum. If there was any way that I could be any more of like a super fan of Kenny's and be completely excited and giddy on this side of the camera, it's not possible. Just saying. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Kenny's like, you just made me real uncomfortable, Carol G. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Kenny knows. Okay. I send him messages all the time. I'm like, oh, I love this new painting. And, you know, and then I got Josh turned on to it. So Josh is constantly watching stuff. And he came across something the other day and it was like a pendulum reel somebody had done. And he said, oh my gosh, you got to send this to Kenny. Kenny's got to do this. So I'm like, okay. So I sent it to Kenny. And Kenny's like, yeah, somebody else said something about doing these. And I was like, okay. I was like, Kenny probably thinks we are so weird. <laughs> no, I get requests to do all kinds of stuff. It's, it's, um, I actually have, sh I actually have to do some of those, uh, this next week. It's a, one of my commission projects. So we'll, oh, we'll see how awesome. it goes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Kenny, for everybody that hasn't fallen in love with you yet, cause they will believe me, you will so fall in love with Kenny, his great personality, but his art is amazing. Kenny share with everybody what you do, what do you create? Um, oh, I guess first, I, it's hard for me to even look at my art as art because I'm, I'm, I, ha my, I have such a mathematical mind. To me, it's more, it's more science. Like I'm doing a science project. Um, and, um, you know, just being able to have the right mixtures of paint and, and, just be able to create something that somebody else sees as beautiful is, is really, you know, the point of my experiment. And um, so I can tell you a little bit about how it started um, about a year ago, right out a year ago, um, I walked into a facial plastic surgeon's office and I was working, I was doing a job there for the job that I work at. And um, he had these, paint pours on his wall and I was just mesmerized by him and I looked at him and I looked at him and you know as an autistic brain I just studied him and I said okay what could have done this you know uh what could have made this how did he do that and I wanted to ask him but instead of asking him I started watching videos on TikTok and I started watching videos of my friend um uh Anna I think her her it's um at Glow Gallery um something like that um, on TikTok and on Instagram. Um, and she, I just watched her videos over and over and over. And this was right at about the time that quarantine had happened. Um, in fact, it, right, it was right when quarantine happened, March 28th of last year. And I decided, I, I'm one of those people that when I see something, I can recreate it, usually no matter what it is, whether it be wood, whether it be, you know, metal or anything. And I saw these paintings and, and I just said, I can go do, I can do that. And, and so I started attempting and I, you know, I reached out to her and asked a few questions. And then after that, I just kind of, um, sorry guys, this is Sammy. She is my half service dog, half pet. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> anyway, she's always by my side. Um, so cute. um but I just, it was just one of those things that I just decided I was going to do. And I decided that I could do it. And, um, whenever I put my mind to something, I just do it. And, um, it wasn't, it wasn't, and I didn't ever do it as a part of a business. I did it to help me with my anxiety because I, I needed to have something to do during quarantine. Um, because I just, 
was so um I'm, I'm very hyperactive too and so i just always have to be doing something and so um that's and it just started from there and um so sorry um, and she's so cute i know she's she's a sweetheart she can always tell if i'm a little nervous and so she's always by my side but um anyways um and people just started reaching out hey we would like to to buy your art and and then it became kind of a kind of a full-time thing for me um besides my other full-time job and full-time school and full-time recovery and and a full-time family man <laughs> i just became another thing that, that could that took my full time you know and um but it's, it's it's been a super big blessing because it's helped me connect with so many parents in the autism community and and give them a um, sense of direction for their kid and to realize that just because the doctors say that your son will never do this doesn't mean that he can't do this or he can't do that and um it's been a very it, from what i understand a lot of parents reach out to me and just tell me how appreciative they are of of what i do and um and showing that just anything is possible and yeah sorry if that was too long of an answer <laughs> it's never never too long that is a perfect answer i love it you know that's i i love that you say i i don't look at it as just my art it's sort of my math and my experiment my science experiment kind of thing you know my first undergraduate degree was a bachelor of fine art in sculpture and jewelry metalsmithing you know 10 years later i go into vision science and the next you know and so it's like this huge flip but i think that's one of the the beautiful things about our neuro distinct brains is that we have this ability to look at things in a very different way even when i did my undergraduate studies in fine art i didn't look at art as art I looked at it as math and science. Yeah. And it was, I chose art over interior design, architecture, um, communication. I mean, I went through all kinds of majors in the first two years trying to figure out what fit, right? But art was the only one that I didn't feel like I was boxed in and I was trapped and bored. I wasn't yeah. bored because I could set up a problem for myself in art and I could solve it and it didn't matter what it was. I looked into, you know, I was doing anatomy and physiology then before I ever got into, you know, going in back into pre-med and going into vision science. I didn't, you know, and I didn't think anything of it. I just thought this is intriguing to me. This makes sense to me. You know, this interests me and I'm not bored by it because I'm kind of like you. I, I, I have a very high energy level. I have the nuclear power plant, you know, versus the solar panel. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I totally you know understand me. that. I totally <laughs> understand that. And it, it, you know, that's the thing. It's like math has always been in my head. I've, you know, when I was in eighth grade, um, my teacher uh, basically told my parents, you know, we can't teach, we can't push your son any further. Um, so really it's pointless for him to even do homework. We'll just have him do the test. If he's willing to teach other kids how to do this math. Um, and Where once, were you once in a week, fifth grade? Where were you? Uh, <laughs> I needed you. <laughs> but, that's, it, but it was even a problem that that was even a problem, right? Because they told me, I sat down with these kids and I was like, well, you just figure it out in your head. And they didn't understand that. And so I couldn't even teach them how to do it. And the teacher would be doing the problem in a calculator and I already had it done on the board. And, and so I, I needed something. I've always needed something to occupy my mind for that. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. If I'm setting up chairs in a row, it's a mathematical equation to me. Everything's an algorithm. And even into social situations, I think a social situation is, is an algorithm. And if the algorithm gets too confusing for me, I retreat and I have to get away because it confuses my brain. And yeah, it there's turns too many my variables. Brain, yeah, it turns my brain into scrambled eggs. And so for me, everything is a mathematical equation, um, whether it be art, whether it be a social, um, 
know, even 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 going and shopping in the grocery store, it's like how can I bounce from this way to this way and get it everything on my list all in a in a pattern. Everything needs to be in a pattern, um, and that way I can be okay. If 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 everything's patternized, then it's okay, and and it makes sense why us autistics have such a problem with change because you take this algorithm that has all of these numbers in and you pluck one of the numbers out and all of a sudden that algorithm in our brain doesn't work anymore but right. when you give us oh, a good. choice when you give us a choice well we can either instead of saying well we can't do this the person says well we can do this or this this is not available we can do this or this which would you like when you give us a choice it gives us a, something to put back in there instead of just taking it out and saying, okay, well, make sense of that. It no longer makes sense to your brain, but it's fine in ours, but go ahead and make sense of that. And all of a sudden we go, our brains go into panic mode and we can't figure out well, what do we do? What do I do? What do I do? And, and we get overwhelmed. Everything gets loud and we have a meltdown or a shutdown or whatever it is. I think that's, that is a really really good way to explain it and you know just having those two options in that moment when that variable is removed because then i can take those two options that you gave me and i can run the variable super quick and decide which one of the two is is the best fit for me <laughs> and then so, i can go with that yes. I'm good perfect exactly <laughs> You get it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I totally get it. You are speaking my language. <laughs> that's that's why we have this talk show so we can speak our particular language. <laughs> yes. Because that's exactly. exactly, you know, autism is its own language. We converse and understand and communicate in our very unique way. Yes, we both speak English, but we speak very different English than other people. <laughs> you yeah, know, it, 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 exactly. it translates to a million different languages all over the world that the autistic version of that language is a little bit different. It is. It, that's a good thing that Tony Atwood talks about. He, you know, he puts himself in the situation of if I were to go to another country where they speak another language. And he said, I think one of the examples was he went to either Japan or China and he put his leg up on his the side of his foot and it showed the bottom of his foot and that's disrespectful to them well he didn't know that right and and it's the same way with an autistic person in in the neurotypical world is we don't realize what we're doing is considered rude or disrespectful or whatever people want to say it is this is our language right like putting up our foot on the side of our leg is our language but it's not yours but it doesn't mean that it's wrong right it just means but it doesn't that mean different. the same thing in our language as it does in their language right exactly <laughs> it just means that it's different it's it's kind of like this saying where i draw a six on the ground and you're standing in front of me and you look down at that six and say it's not a six it's it's a nine well both of us are right right and neither one of us is wrong it's just different Yep. And I think that that's sort of that's one of the examples that I use, because then you also get into the nature of humans and wanting to fight for your perspective. Yes. <laughs> yes <laughs> and wanting exactly. to fight for your perspective when if you just changed your perspective and, and took in the other person's viewpoint for just a second, you'd see that it is both a six and a nine just depending right. on where you're standing. It doesn't right. make it right or wrong, but when you are going to die on that hill fighting for that nine, you, you lose so much in the right. conversation. And, 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 and so that's what the makes connection. it difficult. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. That's what no. makes it difficult is because the neurotypical brain says it's right and the autistic brain says, no, this is what it is. And neither one can think in the other's brain. And so I think that's a big thing that we both have to understand is that neurotypical people have their beliefs and, and everything that, that makes sense to them. And it's not wrong. It's not always wrong, right? And, and that's something we have to accept. And, but they also have to see our point of view, too, is that, you know, um, we are different. You know, I do see a six. Um, and that's what I see. And I cannot see your nine. 
unless you explain it to me. Um, and I think when we can both explain to each other what we're seeing and how we see it, then it, it allows us to have a different perspective. And though we may never see that nine that you see, at least we can accept the fact that they see they see it. And it's okay yeah. that they see it because their brain is different too. Yeah, we can just acknowledge it, that that, right. that that option exists for someone else. Right. So on that note, Kenny, in your art, because art is an unspoken language of communication, what do you communicate and see or what communicates to you in your creation process of your beautiful poured pieces? Um, this is always a hard question. For, can you explain a little more? Sorry. No, that's okay. This is why we have conversation is we ask. <laughs> we get to know. <laughs> so when I create a piece of art, when I paint something, sometimes it just sort of starts off as, I don't know where this is going to head, but I know it's, I'm, I'm going to do a landscape, but I don't know exactly where I'm going to end up. Sometimes I'm very specific about how I lay it out. Like I know what elements are going to be in the piece for the composition. Um, but then it's in the, the development and that creation process where things really start to come together or something that I hadn't planned that's just like this beautiful, happy thing <laughs> shows right. up and I'm like, oh, that really works. Um, but it's some pieces I start with an intention of wanting to communicate a certain emotion or a certain thought or to challenge someone's perspective from a six and a nine. Um, you know, sometimes it's just, you know, having fun with a particular color and layering those things on, um, not necessarily having a particular outcome that I want someone to experience because I just want to put these colors together in different shapes and allow someone else to be able to sort of find something for themselves in it. Did that explain it a little better? Yeah. And, and so uh, this kind of, I, I made up a saying when I first started doing art. Um, and it was just something I thought of one night because I, I saw a lot of people trying to express other people's art in a certain way. And so I came up with a saying and I, and what it is, is, is art has its own voice and its own language and no one person need translate it for it speaks for itself. And so, um, for me, you know, I think my art to me just shows my energy right? It's, it's like allowing people to see my brain for the first time, right? Like if I can just express this in on a canvas and then maybe, maybe people will understand, you know, understand me, right? And understand the things that I'm experiencing that I was told so long ago when I was a kid to shut off. You know, um, take this pill so it'll get rid of your hyperactivity. You know, don't act this way. Stop doing this. Um, and, you know, that, that got bottled up for many years. And I had to find a, a way to um, try to cope with bottling all that up. And that's kind of where my addiction problems uh, came in. But now that I'm, I don't care what other people think when it comes to what I do and how I do things. I want to be free, you know, and I'm going to put my freedom on a canvas and, and, um, and just love who I am. And, and, and this is, this is me. This is me. This is my, the colors in my brain. This is the, 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 the parts that I'm feeling. Um, the, this is my overwhelmness in those point in those times where, you think I'm acting out and really I'm just, I'm just experiencing too much. This is my opportunity to be able to put this right here and for you to see it. Um, and, and I love that people see the beauty in that, right? Like I love that people are able to see that because I think for the first time in my life, everything that I feel like I'm still not able to release, you know, sometimes because I am worried about what other people think, you know, um, I'm able to put that out and, and you're able to see it without me expressing it to you, without talking to you, without, um, I don't know if that makes sense, but. Oh my that gosh. Is, 
it's it's like yes. it's like me taking my insights and just pour like what I feel and just pouring it out on a canvas. And from the body of work that you have created that I have been so incredibly blessed to observe. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm tearing up over here on this side because you spoke so beautifully to who you are and who you are learning and expressing yourself to be in the world. And I see that. I see you, Kenny Davis. <laughs> Thank you. That the piece that you created last week that was on the black background and you and I kind of text back and forth on it. It looks like dancers to me. It, your paintings have such movement and energy to them and the colors and the bursts. But in that particular painting, it looked and reminded me a lot of Matisse's later work where he had people sort of dancing and barely, you know, sort of touching. And it's got that tension between the dancers and the circle. And, you know, I, I express that to you and you go, well, I was kind of thinking like, tight walkers on a trapeze, you know, sort of that circus. Yeah. And I'm like, I see that too. Um, yeah, but it's dancing. Just, it's yeah. Great. But it was just, it was like this beautiful celebration it, to me when I saw it, it, it just, it had so much energy and it had this vitality about it. And it had this tension between people moving that I just thought was so incredible. And all of your work, does very much express so much of what I personally feel. And I think that's why I connect with your work so deeply is because it does sort of represent in so many ways how my brain feels. That makes sense. It's kind of like we were talking about um, the Queen's Gambit, um, you know, and that's kind of what happens is I'll be laying in bed and it'll be late. And usually when I paint, it's very late between 11 and 2 a.m. here in Texas. And um, usually what happens is I'll be laying here and it's, it's again, it's that algorithm going through my head. And sometimes the algorithm isn't fully making sense, but I feel like it's about to come out. Um, and it's kind of like the Queen's Gambit, you know, where she's laying in bed at night and the pieces are moving everywhere around. And, um, and she's just trying to figure out that perfect algorithm for the for that move if this happens and that's the way my paintings are for me and so that painting in itself was like a painting in between paintings it's like the algorithm wasn't even figured out yet it was like i'm feeling this i'm trying to express it i'm trying to clear all of this up let me do this in the meantime um and a lot of times that's me doing a canvas on the ground and and i'll set it up against something and i'll paint it one color and and I may just take a glove and put the paint on a piece of cardboard and flick it with my hands. And, and that's kind of what happened with that one is it was just me putting paint, um, just flicking it on the canvas um, until that algorithm made sense in my head to create the piece that I wanted to create. And a lot of times those are some of my most, uh, the, the ones that I found the most love for is the pieces in between the pieces, the, um, the creation that I'm going for. I think that speaks so beautifully to, and I, I'm, I know I'm not going to get it exactly right, but there was a quote that I came across and it, it's popped up several times over the last few years. And it's, it's not the words that are spoken. It's the quiet between the spoken words. Is where the beauty lies. Yeah. I like and I it. think that's <laughs> what happens in your work. It's it's the pieces in between. And I think so often we we get very goal oriented. Just as humans, we're we're task and goal oriented and we're sort of indoctrinated into that from a societal norm. And we miss those in-betweens. And it's in that in-between where the magic of creativity, where all of those pieces that are just sort of starting. I, I, I joke all the time and tell my friends, it's like, I've got this board that's sort of like the FBI string board, you know, on a big case. And, I, and I've got all of these tacks and, and these pieces of, you know, string going in all these different directions. And sometimes it's that 
in between time where all of the dots haven't been quite connected. They're sort of there and they're kind of starting to come together, you know, but it's in that in between where it's not quite, it's still just jointed in some way, but it's where all of a sudden you get that burst for the next thing, you know? And if you miss that in between and you're trying to force and push your way through it, you never really get that fully realized result. Oh, this is how I uh, that speaks so much truth into what I went into this last week. I had a friend of mine one one of a painting done, and mm -hmm. um, she's a really she's a very good friend. Um, but me being autistic, um, I especially when it comes to art, is I have to be allowed partial freedom in my art. Um, and again, I love this person to death, but she, she changed like three times on me. Um, and I could not get the result that I want. And, and it was okay because the other pieces sold immediately because, you know, they were, they were good pieces, but I, I never was happy with the end product because I felt like I was a production line at a certain point and I could not create and it, and it, it almost shut me down. Um, and it's been real hard for me to get talk back with this person, you know, as my friend since that, because I just, I am almost overwhelmed at even the fact of going back and talking to this person, um, you know, um, because I, you know, when it, art is about the freedom, I, I feel like it's about freedom to be able to express no matter who you are, whether you're autistic or not, it's, it's about expression. And if you're confined in a cage, um, you can't fully express yourself. And I think that even goes into autism itself is we've, we've all been confined. We've to been told not to do this and not to do that and to, to not be ourselves. And, um, and when you do that, we, we, we never flourish. We never become who we are. And so when I finally got the official diagnosis of being autistic, um, it was, it was so much freedom for me. Like it took a while because the self pity set in, right? Like poor me had I known long before that I was autistic, then all of this other stuff could have been different, right? And and I was thinking about, you know, and then the the entitlement set in, like, oh, um, you you have to call me this. You can't, you know, you have to know that I'm autistic, right? Before you know me, period. Or or you can't support this group. And and, and all of that set in. And and finally I just pushed all of that out of the way and I said, I don't care. I don't care what other people think anymore. And then that's when everything started firing in my brain. It was like explosions of color. And I had nothing to do with that color. I had nowhere to put it. Nowhere to put it until I saw some canvases one day. It was like when I, when I let go of the cares of the world, the uh, frustrations, the everything, when I let go of all of that, my mind was free to express itself and say, okay, Kenny, who are you? Right. Like who who are you going to be through all of this? And are you going to worry about what, you know, this person says about, you know, attaching yourself to the right symbol in autism or the right verbiage or. And I, I get it. Like, I totally get all of that. But I wanted to be free from all of it. You know, that's that's one reason I don't watch the news. You, you and I talked about that a little bit before, but I, I haven't watched the news in seven years. Um, because I don't concern myself with that. It has, it's out of my control. It's not something that I control. I'd rather be in a place where I can control or I, I'm enjoying the control that I have. And, and that for me is painting. I think we're going to stick a pin in that one and we're going to repeat it. <laughs> 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 I enjoy what I do have control over. Yeah. And the, the, the key word there is enjoy. Because they're, oh man, yeah, I, I am like you. We, we had this discussion and Kenny and I both, we don't watch the news. We don't 
subscribe to that influence in our life anymore. And it was an intentional decision that we both made because it was a quality of life choice. And it's one of the beautiful things that I love about our community and about how just being able to have this conversation with you right now is so important because our life for so long, because we've been indoctrinated to believe certain things about ourselves and about the world. And when we get this beautiful freedom key that says, you're autistic, you just think a little differently. Your brain operates in a different way and you're not broken. You're not defective. You just see the world in a different way. And it is so important. It is so critical because there is a, a, an African word that I absolutely love. And when I understood what it meant, that it's not just a definition, it's not just a word in itself, it is a way of life. The word is Ubuntu. And it means I am because we are. I can't be the very best version of me that helps to connect and elevate and raise another person up if you aren't being your best you so that collectively we are. And it's so important that as we are learning more about ourselves, just as autistics, but as people, we also embrace the fact that We've got this freedom to now choose that we didn't have before because we didn't know. And we can choose to go, you know what? I am different. I do see the world differently because I see it differently. It's going to make you better. It's going to make our world better. And we are going to elevate humanity through seeing a six and a nine. And maybe all the other options that you and I hadn't seen yet. Yeah. And, and that's what I kind of wish for all, all autistics is to just just be you. Don't don't worry. Don't worry about what everybody else thinks. Don't worry about you know, um, you know. Don't worry about how other people are supporting. You know, if they're supporting it the wrong way, that's their decision. And do do you be find out who you are and what you're. You know, your um, things that make you different that the world can love because, you know, Tony Atwood says it. He's like, it's there in each one of us. It's there. There's there's that gift. It's autism can be considered a gift. Um, and I consider mine a gift is that what I've been given is it, it has a beauty inside of it. I just need to tap into it. and. And when I tap into it, he'll do the rest, right? When I allow myself to be okay with the rest of the world, you know, <clears throat> I feel like there's a power out there, a God out there, whatever it is, no name behind it. I don't know, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's going to help me out on my journey. And it's going to, if I put one foot in front of the other, to not be upset with the world or be worried about what everybody else thinks, then there's a freedom there. And with freedom comes a life. And, and I think that's what we're all here for. But if we're sitting there worried about what everybody else thinks, then we're living in their brain. We're trying to live in, in their existence. And there's no point in living in somebody else's existence um, because you can't do it. You can't change their mind. You can't, you can't change. I mean, you can change the world, but do you think you do it by worrying about what everybody else thinks? Or do you think you do it by the action that you put forward and, and putting one foot in front of the other in the best way that you can? Kitty Davis from Painting on the Spectrum. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for being here and for sharing your story and your creative process and what it means to you. You can Thank check you out Kenny on Instagram at Painting on the Spectrum and on TikTok. And I'll have all the links below so that you can connect with Kenny and go check out his amazing art and get a piece for yourself. You will love the energy, the color, and Kenny's brain and all his math. Thanks so much, guys. We'll see you next week.